Ketosis is a normal metabolic process that provides several health benefits. During ketosis, your body converts fat into compounds known as ketones and begins using them as its main source of energy. That being said, achieving a state of ketosis can take some work and planning. It's not just as simple as cutting carbs. Here are 7 effective tips to get into ketosis. Number 1. Minimize your carb consumption. Eating a very low-carb diet is by far the most important factor in achieving ketosis. Normally, your cells use glucose, or sugar, as their main source of fuel. However, most of your cells can also use other fuel sources. This includes fatty acids, as well as ketones, which are also known as ketone bodies. Your body stores glucose in your liver and muscles in the form of glycogen. When carb intake is very low, glycogen stores are reduced, and levels of the hormone insulin decline. This allows fatty acids to be released from fat stores in your body. Your liver converts some of these fatty acids into the ketone bodies acetone, acetoacetate, and beta-hydroxybutyrate. These ketones can be used as fuel by portions of the brain. The level of carb restriction needed to induce ketosis is somewhat individualized. Some people need to limit net carbs, total carbs minus fiber, to 20 grams per day, while others can achieve ketosis while eating twice this amount or more. All in all, limiting your carb intake to 20 to 50 net grams per day lowers blood sugar and insulin levels, leading to the release of stored fatty acids that your liver converts into ketones. Number 2. Include coconut oil in your diet. Eating coconut oil can help you get into ketosis. It contains fats called medium-chain triglycerides MCTs. Unlike most fats, MCTs are rapidly absorbed and taken directly to the liver, where they can be used immediately for energy or converted into ketones. In fact, it's been suggested that consuming coconut oil may be one of the best ways to increase ketone levels in people with Alzheimer's disease and other nervous system disorders. When adding coconut oil to your diet, it's a good idea to do so slowly to minimize digestive side effects like stomach cramping or diarrhea. Start with 1 teaspoon per day and work up to 2 to 3 tablespoons daily over the course of a week. You can find coconut oil at your local grocery store or purchase it online. In short, consuming coconut oil provides your body with MCTs, which are quickly absorbed and converted into ketone bodies by your liver. Number 3. Ramp up your physical activity. A growing number of studies have found that being in ketosis may be beneficial for some types of athletic performance, including endurance exercise. In addition, being more active can help you get into ketosis. When you exercise, you deplete your body of its glycogen stores. Normally, these are replenished when you eat carbs, which are broken down into glucose and then converted to glycogen. However, if carb intake is minimized, glycogen stores remain low. In response, your liver increases its production of ketones, which can be used as an alternate fuel source for your muscles. Keep in mind that, although exercise increases ketone production, it may take 1-4 to four weeks for your body to adapt to using ketones and fatty acids as primary fuels. During this time, physical performance may be reduced temporarily. Number 4. Increase your healthy fat intake. Consuming plenty of healthy fat can boost your ketone levels and help you reach ketosis. Indeed, a very low-carb ketogenic diet not only minimizes carbs but is also high in fat. Ketogenic diets for weight loss, metabolic health, and exercise performance usually provide between 60-80% to 80 of calories from fat. Furthermore, because fat makes up such a large percentage of a ketogenic diet, it's important to choose high-quality sources. Good fats include olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, butter, lard, and tallow. In addition, there are many healthy, high-fat foods that are also very low in carbs. However, if your goal is weight loss, it's important to make sure you're not consuming too many calories in total, as this can cause your weight loss to stall. Number 5. Try a short fast or a fat fast. Another way to get into ketosis is to go without eating for several hours. In fact, many people go into mild ketosis between dinner and breakfast. Intermittent fasting, a dietary approach that involves regular short-term fasts, may also induce ketosis. Moreover, fat fasting is another ketone-boosting approach that mimics the effects of fasting. 
It involves consuming about 1,000 calories per day, 85 to 90 percent of which come from fat. This combination of low calorie and very high fat intake may help you achieve ketosis quickly. In short, fasting, intermittent fasting, and a fat fast can all help you get into ketosis relatively quickly. Number 6. Maintain adequate protein intake. Achieving ketosis requires a protein intake that is adequate but not excessive. However, for most people, cutting back on protein to increase ketone production isn't a healthy practice. First, it's important to consume enough protein to supply the liver with amino acids that can be used for gluconeogenesis, which translates to making new glucose. In this process, your liver provides glucose for the few cells and organs in your body that can't use ketones as fuel, such as your red blood cells and portions of the kidneys and brain. Second, protein intake should be high enough to maintain muscle mass when carb intake is low, especially during weight loss. Several studies have shown that the preservation of muscle mass and physical performance is maximized when protein intake is in the range of 0.55 to 0.77 grams per pound, 1.2 to 1.7 grams per kilogram of lean mass. To calculate your protein needs on a ketogenic diet, multiply your ideal body weight in pounds by 0.55 to 0.77, 1.2 to 1.7 in kilograms. For example, if your ideal body weight is 130 pounds, 59 kilograms, your protein intake should be 71 to 100 grams. Overall, consuming too little protein can lead to muscle mass loss, whereas excessive protein intake may suppress ketone production. Number 7. Test ketone levels and adjust your diet as needed. Like many things in nutrition, achieving and maintaining a state of ketosis is highly individualized. Therefore, it can be helpful to test your ketone levels to ensure you're achieving your goals. The three types of ketones, acetone, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and acetoacetate, can be measured in your breath, blood or urine. Acetone is found in your breath, and studies have confirmed testing acetone breath levels as a reliable way to monitor ketosis in people following ketogenic diets. Ketones can also be measured with a blood ketone meter. Similar to the way a glucose meter works, a small drop of blood is placed on a strip that's inserted into the meter. It measures the amount of beta-hydroxybutyrate in your blood, and it has also been found to be a valid indicator of ketosis levels. The disadvantage of measuring blood ketones is that the strips are very expensive. Lastly, the ketone measured in urine is acetoacetate. Ketone urine strips are dipped into urine and turn various shades of pink or purple depending on the level of ketones present. A darker color reflects higher ketone levels. Ketone urine strips are easy to use and fairly inexpensive. Although their accuracy in long-term use has been questioned, they should initially provide confirmation that you are in ketosis. Using one or more of these methods to test ketones can help you determine whether you need to make any adjustments to get into ketosis. If you like video, give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And subscribe to the channel for more useful videos.